Hello, Fabian here. Today we will take a look into how to write a plugin for Octoprint. Octoprint is a really cool software for 3D printers. Mostly it's used on a Raspberry Pi and then the Raspberry Pi is connected to the 3D printer. And then it can be used as a print server to send print jobs, but also to monitor the ongoing print and especially 3D prints takes quite some time. And the cool thing is you can enhance it by plugins. And there are really a lot of cool plugins, for example, to visualize the battle leveling or to also monitor it from your phone or control it from your mobile phone. Octoprint was started in 2012 and is originally a fork from Cura. And it's written in Python. So we will take a look into Python today and not a simple hello world instead in some extra program i wrote some years ago and i think these days it's used by over 500 people at least so let's get started here we are on the home page of octoprint and can go to the plugins page on plugins.octoprint.org you find all the plugins which are officially published if we scroll down a little bit we can see it's currently a little bit over 300 plugins and to give you two examples which i mentioned in the intro there's for example the bed level visualizer and what it does you maybe know for your bed you can set some bed leveling and then this plugin can for example visualize it so you can really see how your bed is leveled another one is called assess anywhere where you can use your mobile phone in the end to monitor and also to control your print for example to cancel it here you can see some screenshots but we now want to search for the plugin i wrote let's search for restore and yes it's, it's the first one restore leveling after g28 before we are going to look into the implementation let's first understand how it works most of the operating systems on 3d printers use marlin or a fork of Marlin. And what Marlin does, if this bed leveling is enabled, it's disabled when a G28 is executed. G28 means home. Now let's assume, for example, you created your slicing in Cura or some other tools, and then you have your G code. And in the end, most of the time, the G code will start with the G28. So first go home and then start the print. So Marlin will disable the bed leveling. In the firmware itself of Marlin, there's a flag which can be set to restore the bed leveling. But that means you have to compile the operating system yourself. And I wanted to have a soft switch so I can switch it in Octoprint. What this plugin now does, basically, if there is the G28 command, it executes this command which basically gives the state if the bed leveling is enabled or not. And then this is stored and after the G28, then if it was enabled before, we execute here another command to enable it. If it was disabled before, there's nothing to do. So in the end, it's a simple program which basically watches a little bit what kind of codes are executed. And as shown here, currently it's used by, oh, actually already nearly 600 people. And before we go now into the code, also let quickly jump back to the homepage. And here on the more, you find the documentation. I will also link it in the video description. And if you go there under developing plugins and then plugins tutorial, you find there a uh, really simple hello world but as said we want to check some extra program but just to understand it quickly what's going on here we can take a short look so you add some metadata in the end just as setting a name and a version and some other fields and what this plugin just does here it's just the hello world so it only prints on startup hello world that that's all so we are now going to look into the actual program restore leveling after g28 if we scroll down here a little bit we can go to the homepage or the source in this case it's the same 
we go to GitHub and here you find the code. But I will open the repository now in VS Code. Here on the left we can see the structure of the repository. The implementation can be found in the octoprint underscore restore leveling after g28 directory. It's basically the Python module name and there's the convention you name your directory as the module. If we start from the top in this file, we can see we have here the main import comes from octoprint.plugin and from there we have the octoprint plugin class. And all our logic is now inside a custom class here, which inherits from this default class provided by the octoprint module. Before we are going to look into now the implementation here, let's scroll down to the end where we can see how it's actually set up. First of all, as seen in the hello world, we have some metadata information as the plugin name and the Python version to which our plugin is compatible. This is just a convention by Octoprint which fields exist and how they are named. The same for the function here, it's called plugin loaded, it's the hook which is executed for all the plugins. Here we get the global plugin implementation and attach to it our custom class. And next we also register some kind of hooks. Now let's go to our class. If we scroll up we have here the constructor and we first of all set leveling enabled to false because we simply don't know on plugin startup if it's enabled or not enabled. But this variable it's used to store the state. And the first thing is we have to do, we have to listen if there is a G28 executed or not. And therefore there's a hook of course for it, of course, because this is how Octoprint works in the end. And if we scroll down to the hooks here, we have the hook called octoprint.com protocol gcode queuing. This one is executed each time a gcode is queued, so it gets executed soon. And here we have registered now our function hook gcode queuing. And if we go to this one, we can check. Let me maybe close the structure on the left to have some more space. This is now executed for all commands. And of course, we are just interested in the G28. And we get as input the G code parameter. And if there's none or it's not G28, because we won't do any actions there. Only if there's the G28, we want to do something. If we now get a G28 code, so pass this if condition, then we want to do three things. And this is why we return here a list of commands. So we can either return a single command or also multiple commands. And this helps us here. Because first of all, we want to execute this one here. The M420V command prints the current status, which means it prints if the bad leveling is enabled or not enabled. This is what was just queued. And afterwards, we again want to execute some command to restore the leveling. So if we figure out here it was enabled, then the command is executed, and then we want to enable it again. We will take a look into how this works in detail soon. And here it's just some debug luck which might be helpful during development of the plugin but doesn't really matter in the end. Now each time there's a G28 we execute first this command. As said it will print if the bad leveling is enabled or disabled. Therefore we have to register another hook. If we go back again to our hooks we can also see here we have the same gqt, but instead of queuing, we have received. This is called each time we receive some output from a command which is executed. And here again, we have registered our own function. If we go there, we can see as input, we get mainly the line. And the line is really the output. There's no context anymore of what kind of command was executed. We really just know the string line. And if we don't have any line or the line does not start with echo, 
bad leveling, then we simply want to return. The hook is executed for all G codes, so and we are only interested in one specific one, and this starts always with this kind of string in the system Marlin. If our output line now starts with this string, we don't end up here in the return, instead we are ending up here. And what happens here, we now check if apart from this string, there is also in the line the bad leveling on, because either it will print on or off. And just to ensure, because it depends a little bit on the Marlin version, if this is now uppercase or lowercase, so we transform all the line to lowercase and just pass it to a boolean. So we now know if it was enabled or disabled and store it in our variable, which we saw in the constructor before. And then we just return the line. So we don't modify it. We simply only want to extract some information from it and store in our variable if it was enabled or not. That means now, coming back to the queuing, that means we have executed now this command and we know if the leveling was enabled or disabled and stored it in a variable. Next, the original command, the g20home, the go home is executed. And afterwards, we queued now this command. And you can already see it start with an add. It's a so-called add command. It's not an actual g-code which is sent to the printer. It's something made up by Octoprint. So this will never be sent to the printer. And we can see here, it's some variable. And if we go there, it has just some name. So add restore leveling. And you can already guess what happens there. Again, we can also have a hook, which listens to the add commands. Here you can see we have a hook called add command dot sending and we have registered their also function. So each time now there is this command executed, we can react on it. First of all, the hook is again executed for all add commands. So if we don't have our registered command, we can just return. Also, if bad leveling was not enabled, we can also simply return because there's no action to do. But if we now end up here, which means there was an add restore leveling command and bad leveling was enabled before, we want to enable it again. Therefore, we have the command m420s1 for enabling it. And there we now assess the printer by self dot underscore printer. This is available because we inherit here from the octoprinter plugin class and we can execute the command. And this is actually already all. So now if the bad leveling was enabled, we again just execute the command and it will be enabled again. And if you look closely, we saw here there was actually also another hook. In the name you can already see it's not related to the protocols instead to plugin.software update check config and here we have registered another function if we go there we can see it's more about adding some meta information not only the plugin name the main point here is how to update the plugin we can see here in this case we are using github releases therefore we need the repository name and then also the command, which is the path here, where to find the plugins. And that's all for today. If you have any suggestions or comments, please put them in the comments below. See you next time.